Hello, welcome to the third video in the Labtainer walkthrough series. Labtainers are virtual machine labs provided by the Naval Postgraduate School, built to give students hand-on experience with cybersecurity concepts. These labs and their manuals can be found at mps.edu. In this video, we explore the Labtainer Metasploit, which explores the software vulnerability of a Metasploit tool used by penetration testers to detect basic vulnerabilities in a potential victim system. This tool is installed on a Kali Linux system used by the attacker. This tool is installed on a Kali Linux system used by the attacker with IP address 192.168.1.3, and the victim is known as the host with IP address 192.168.1.2. Like any labtainer, we initialize the lab by running labtainer and then the labtainer's name, which for this lab is called Metasport. Once all necessary resources are downloaded, we can simply hit enter to start the lab. With the lab started, you will see two new terminals, one called Ubuntu at attacker and the other called Ubuntu at victim. These are the terminals in which you will perform the lab. We would like to first verify connectivity between the attacker and the victim's computer. On the attacker's terminal, we first run ping 192.168.1.2 to verify that we are able to connect to the victim's computer. We receive successful responses to our pings. We then identify vulnerable services on the victim's system by doing a nmap scan of the victim's system. We can remotely log into the victim with root privilege to take a peek at the desired file in root that we'll be using to verify successful penetration and following tasks. Here we can see a successful remote login and viewing of the target file. The first exploit we will test is the ingress lock exploit. Ingress lock is an old service that is used to lock down specific areas of an ingress SQL database application. Unfortunately, during the development of the application, the developers decided to leave port 1524 open, a port that directly links to the ingress lock service. This service can be exploited by an attacker that makes a connection with the port, as any connection automatically logs the attacker in with the same rights that the user running the service has, which unfortunately is also root access. We can connect to the port by using the Telnet protocol, an old protocol that is a two-way connection for information and file exchange. The command we run is Telnet 192.168.1.2 port 1524. And upon executing the command, we see that we easily obtain a root shell in the victim system and are able to retrieve the target file. The second exploit we will test is the disk ccd exploit provided in the Metasploit package. We begin by initializing the Postgres database by running the command sudo msfdb init, and then we can open the Metasploit console by running sudo msf console. With the Metasploit console open, we can search for disk ccd exploit by running search disk ccd. We select the exploit by running the use exploit command and view its options by typing the options command. Notice that the target victim's IP address is not set in our hosts, so we set it by running set our host 192.168.1.2 and then run the exploit using exploit. Here we see successful execution of the exploit and access to the root shell on the victim's system. The service disk.cc is used for accelerating the compilation of source code by using distributed computing over the network. Unfortunately, by opening up the computer to multiple devices over the network, this opens the door to vulnerabilities in the system. By connecting through disk.cc, we are able to execute arbitrary commands through compilation jobs, which the server, the host, does not check or authenticate. By executing the right commands, we are able to gain access to a shell and access the target file. We may even elevate our privileges to root through other means. The third exploit we will test is the IRC exploit provided in the Metasploit package. We begin by running sudo msf console to open Metasploit and search for the exploit by running search unreal ircd. We select the exploit by running the use exploit command and view its options by typing the options command. Notice that the target victim's IP address is not set in our hosts, 
So we set it by running set our host 192.168.1.2 and then run the exploit using exploit. Here we see successful execution of the exploit and access to the shell on the victim system. The IRC protocol stands for Internet Relay Chat and is an old protocol used to lay the foundations for most instant messaging services found today. The vulnerability is created through a Trojan horse virus that installs a backdoor via an unassuming installation file. Because IRC is an internet communication protocol, it gives us a pathway to connect with the victim's computer and reach the backdoor that allows us to access the target machine and install and run a shell to access our target file. Since this is a Trojan horse virus that tricks the user in thinking that it's an update installation, there's not much that can be done once the virus has been installed. The fourth exploit we will test is the VSF TPD exploit provided in the Metasploit package. We begin by running sudo msf console to open Metasploit and search for the exploit by running search VSF TPD 234. We select the exploit by running the use exploit command and view its options by typing the options command. Notice the target victim's IP address is not set in our hosts, so we set it by running set our host 192.168.1.2 and then run the exploit using exploit. Here, we see successful execution of the exploit and access to the shell on the victim's system. The, the VSF TPD stands for Very Secure File Transfer Protocol Daemon. We can already see the potential for remote access to the File Transfer Protocol, FTP, as it enables connection between devices over a computer network and subsequently attempts of malicious access. Because FTP has the ability to allow users to connect anonymously if the server is configured in such a way, a backdoor is available allowing malicious attackers to connect and log in anonymously without need for a username or password. Even worse, the VSF TPD service was running as root, giving us a root shell upon connection and allowing us to access the target file. The fifth exploit we will test is the Samba exploit provided in the Metasploit package. We begin by running sudo msf console to open Metasploit and search for the exploit by running search user map underscore script. We select the exploit by running the use exploit command and view its options by typing the options command. Once again, notice that the target's victim IP address is not set in our host, so we set it by running set our host 192.168.1.2 and then run the exploit using exploit. Here we can see successful execution of the exploit and access to the shell on the victim's system. The Sama service is an implementation of the server message block SMB protocol. Devices that run Samba are usually printers or file sharing servers that can be used as a gateway to the rest of the network. Through access to these devices, the attacker may obtain lists of usernames and can then brute force the rest of the credentials. Because Samba is cross-platform between Linux and Windows devices, access to one device can open the door to all other devices with Samba. We are able to attack the location in which the Samba service stores the user's password and we are able to change the password and open up a shell to access the target file. Because the command username map script is a non-default Samba command and the source of the vulnerability, Samba patched the vulnerability by requiring authenticated user sessions. The sixth exploit we will test is the HTTP PHP exploit provided in the Metasploit package. We begin by running sudo msf console to open Metasploit and search for the exploit by running search PHP CGI. We select the exploit by running the use exploit command and view its options by typing the options command. Notice the target victim's IP address is not set in our hosts, so we set it by running set our host 192.168.1.2 and then run the exploit using exploit. Upon successful exploitation, a meter Peter prompt will be shown and we can drop a shell by running the shell command. Here we see successful execution of the exploit and access to the shell on the victim's system. The HTTP PHP exploit uses the Hypertext Transfer Protocol HTTP, to connect to the victim's device and inject viral PHP code that would allow attacker access. The exploit involves crafting a custom HTTP request that contains unique query stream parameters and underflowing the environment path info with modified data. Once the victim's computer has received the odd request, Further requests by the victim that contain the compromised query string parameter will result in the execution of viral code linked to the parameter's value. In our version, the payload exploits a bug in the PHP CGI wrapper that allows the injecting of CGI options to the executable as well as piping of other shell commands. 
The virus then attempts to upload the PHP code onto the server run by the Plesk tool, and we install a special interactive shell called a meter preter unique to Metasploit that allows us to subsequently access the shell on the victim's computer and access the target file. The seventh exploit we will test is the Postgres exploit provided in the Metasploit package. We begin by running sudo msf console to open Metasploit and search for the exploit by running search postgres payload. We select the exploit by running use exploit command to view its options by typing the options command. Notice the target victim's IP address is once again not set in our hosts, so we set it by running a set our host 192.168.1.2 and then run the exploit using exploit. Upon successful exploitation, a meter preter prompt will be shown and we can drop a shell by running the shell command. Here we see successful execution of the exploit and access to the shell on the victim system. PostgreSQL is a database application that is relatively popular, and this exploit takes advantage of the fact that the Postgres service account can write to the slash TMP directory, allowing for execution of a viral payload. We are able to use the default PostgreSQL database name of template1 to break in and create a database on the victim system, and then execute our viral payload to install a meter preter shell, which can then be used to access the target file. And that's all for the Metasploit lab. Make sure you exit the lab terminal and run stoplab in the original terminal to save your work. See you in the next lab!